Thank you, Rebecca. This is a meeting of the Green Advisory Committee on January 12th, 2022 at uh, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Um, announcements, open session, public comments. Does anybody have anything? Okay, hearing none, why don't we quickly take a look at the uh, minutes from December 8th and um, see if there are any amendments offered before we move. And Kevin, are you on? Kevin? Oh, he's muted. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute him now. Kevin. <coughs> Kevin, are you on? Joe, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Kevin, we are just reviewing the minutes from the December 8th meeting. Are there any amendments offered? Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion for approval? <coughs> Uh, I have a motion to accept the minutes as printed. Okay, okay. thank you. With them. Do we have a second? I'll second. Kevin, thank you. Okay. Uh, roll call, uh, Flip. Aye, here. Martha. Aye. Kevin. Yeah. Sam. Yes, yay. Okay, uh, David. Yep. Ed. Yes. Okay. And it's our past. Uh, the next item on the agenda, Michael DeVasto requested to um, come to this meeting to clarify his intention on the motion uh, that he offered that was passed by the select board regarding a um, marina plan. Michael. Hey, Joe. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So uh, basically just want to clarify that I listened to a couple of the meetings uh, following that and um, we were really not looking for a comprehensive marina master plan here. What, what, what we're looking for is a management plan and um, similar to what, you know, the shellfish advisory board does with the um, shellfish management plan and the uh, Natural Resources Advisory Board does with the, uh, the har uh, Harbor Management Plan. Um, and basically what we're looking for is a basic documentation of what this board really is charged to do in a way, and that is to make recommendations and uh, some future planning, but by planning, um, we're more looking at management planning, like identifying the issues that go on in the marina. And the advisory committee already knows a lot of this stuff, but we just kind of need some documentation. What are the current issues? What are the conditions of the marina? And we would hope that you'd be able to rely on the harbor master to uh, give you some of this documentation as well. Oops. And uh, as far as an assessment, basically the basic condition, like, you know, document what, what are the infrastructure we have? What are the, uh, the condition of the buildings basically? Um, and uh, you know, the DPW, the Harbor Master, a lot of this work is, is out there already been done and can be accessed 
but uh, we're looking for something where that's sort of put together in one document so it can be referred to on future improvements. The rest of this is really basically asking the Marine Advisory Committee to you know, assess and identify the problems, set some goals for the Marine going forward. What does the Marine Advisory Committee want to see happen in the future? I don't care. This is really a basic uh, suggested structure that I've offered. How you guys do it really is up to the committee. Um, but you know, this is about identifying the goals, the Harbor Master's goals, laying them out there. And then by strategic plan, really, we're talking about recommendations of how to accomplish those goals in the future. And maybe um, one of those things is to create a master marina plan and hire a consultant. Maybe that's what comes out of this, but that's not what we're looking for in this. What we're looking for is a management plan. So what are the issues like? Are there management issues? Are there signage issues? I, I know I listen to the meetings and I know there's issues that come up regularly and we'd like to bring those out in to the public and to the select board and to the harbor master to, to sort of move the marina in a direction and have the marina advisory committee be the ones who um, really identify these things and document them with the harbor master so that there's you know uh i don't know we know there's issues around dockage dock signs like people understanding the fees those types of things and so um, what I'd like to see is something along the lines of what, you know, uh, for instance, like the, they're identifying a problem, like, you know, people don't understand where to park when they're coming into the Harbor. I don't know. I'm not on the Marine Advisory Committee, but I know that's something that comes up and maybe the Marine Advisory Committee would recommend you know, that there be new signage and it placed in these locations, those sorts of things, like whether the Marine Advisory Committee thinks that it's possible or we should look into um, adding more slip space. I don't know if there's impediments to that, but, but it's really just a management plan, not a master plan that, that we've requested. Um, you know, how the, the quality of the work that that you guys do and how in depth you get is really up to the committee. Um, I just laid out a basic suggested structure to it, but where you guys go from there it would be up to you. Okay, um, members, any questions or comments? Uh, where Where is the... Uh... This report, where is this request? I haven't seen any at all. Well, can uh, we repeat that? I said, I haven't seen anything about this request, uh, about Michael's uh, request at all. No, no uh, report, no, no, uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard of this till now, basically. Well, I, I emailed everybody at the last meeting uh, what Michael said at the select board meeting, what he was requesting. Yeah, I wasn't at the last meeting. So. Okay, well, I e emailed everything out. I'm looking at it. It says management plan, assessment, brief, brief history, assessment of conditions, room for more slips, um, how, how, you, how the resources are used, distributed slips, parking, recreational, commercial, current problems identified, conflicts, what improvements can be made, strategic plans, recommendation, potential action items. Now that's okay. just right at the top. It says suggested structure. I just wanted right. to outline sort of how, you know, it, it would be, it could be uh, structured, but the questions that you guys come up with are the, basically, if you think about it as basically doing a basic assessment of where we're at and what the goals are, what the problems are and documenting those things. And then coming up with recommendations. I mean, essentially that's all we're really asking for. Uh -huh. so, so we're not gonna have any say about like uh, a balance between like recreational boaters in the amount of shellfish grants that are put out. 
I mean, how you guys structure it's really up to the shell. To, well, the last the, time that was brought up to the selectmen, they sort of got spanked. The the committee, uh, they, well, the committee they get can, a little aggressive on it. The committee can recommend anything that it wants to. I'm not here to dictate anything at all. I mean, if you look at the charge, I think it's pretty explicit in the Marine Advisory Committee's charge, I think personally, um, that it relates to marina operations and the marina itself. Now, what you guys recommend is, is really up to you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be confrontational in any way. What I'd like to see is the Marine Advisory Committee sort of set some goals documented. I know that you guys as individuals have goals uh, for the marina moving forward and to document those goals, to document the problems that are existing in the marina. So that's you know on paper um, and work with the Harbor Master to sort of come up with recommendations and they could involve new infrastructure, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's really like, um, and if you refer to, to what the Shellfish Advisory Board does with their uh, management plan and what the Natural Resources Advisory Board does with their management plan, which is a harbor management plan about the whole harbor, and they, they maybe should consult with Marina Advisor, uh, Advisory Committee when they update their plan, or you guys can individually interject into that harbor management plan. Um, but the structure of those plans is out there. They're public plans. They update them maybe every 10 or 15 years, something like that. Um, but basically, it, it sort of keeps things moving. It sets goals for the select board so that they understand, you know, where we're at and where the committee would like to go and, and you know, uh, how we can get there. And, you know, maybe what comes out of this management plan is a push to have a master plan but it's hard to ask for a master plan when there hasn't been, you know, sort of the problems documented and the goals identified uh, to, to get us there to where we're spending money and, and capital to, to create a master plan and, and hire a consultant. You know, what we're looking for is the basic structure here. And, and we want, you know, the Harbor Master to be particularly involved and also be answering some of these questions for you, you know? So some of the things like, you know, uh, the lifespan maybe, on, I, I mean, it really, it's up to you. I mean, we're just asking for the, the basic management plan and it, and it can be as basic as you want. I would refer to those other plans, but, but not a master plan that involves engineering skills or, you know, I, I don't think it's beyond the scope of, of this committee to do. And, you know, nor does it have to be super in depth. It's really up to you, the quality and the amount of time. I mean, we've basically laid out about a year to accomplish it. Um, and, you know, whether it's five pages, 10 pages, 15 pages, I don't really know. Um, it's, it's really up to you guys. But, but essentially, the core of it is what we want is, is goals and recommendations and identifying problems. That's, that's really what the documenting those things. And I, I think you guys do that to some degree at every meeting, but without the documentation. So a lot of this stuff is already, you know, you know it all, like it's, you deal with it on a regular basis, but communicating that to the public and to the select board, if they're not watching your meetings and, or people aren't going to the Marine Advisory Committee meetings, they're not getting that. And then some of that, I think, I think we, we can sort of push to get the Marina into, you know, where we want it to be in the future and where you guys see it in the future. Michael, this clarification mm -hmm. uh, is helpful. Yes. Um, a couple of um, couple of points I want to put on the table. Um, we've worked recently with the NRAB on their updated harbor management plan. Um, we've met with John Real. Um, we have um, met with Nancy a while back and the vice chair and chair of the Shellfish Advisory Board on issues as well. Um, there's, there's a couple of things um, that have come up in the committee um, and that we need to address with you. Um, the, the first issue is that um, I think committee members feel that um, the issues around um, the marina um, certainly aren't limited to the physical marina itself. 
but we get a lot of comments, complaints, issues raised by voters, okay? Sure. Most recently, um, the issues involved uh, safety of navigation in the channel, in the harbor, in the Black <laughs> Creek, and uh, involved selfish issue, issues. That's why we invited Nancy and the folks from the SAB. Um, now, at that select board meeting um, where you presented this, um, I recall your offering the opinion that our work should be limited strictly only to the physical marina. And the committee has a different thought on that. Um, Michael speak or committee members speak. Yeah, as I we, mean, as you, you know, one of our one of our part of our charge is to hear voter complaints. And in the 20 years I've been on the committee, we've always done that and have always been able to resolve them. Um, usually with the satisfaction of the complainants and the harbor master. Sure. I mean, obviously there's going to be complaints in the harbor and if they're, you know, um, directed to the Marine Advisory Committee, then what you do with those, um, you know, is up to the committee. I mean, I think it's pretty clear in the, in the charge of the committee, but that's, you know, my personal opinion. I didn't write the charge and I guess it could be interpreted any way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's quite clear you know, that the, the Marina Advisory Committee's charge is to study and make recommendations to the Harbor Master and Board of Selectmen relative to Marina operations, the establishment and enforcement of policies and procedures, future planning as a committee, examine complaints made by any vessel owner or other user of the Marina and refer any recommendations regarding such to the Harbor Master. So if there's complaints that come in, I would assume that you'd refer them to the Harbor Master, um, but that the Marine Advisory Committee is not charged with setting policy on the use of the harbor resources. I, I don't think that's in your charge. Um, whether you guys talk about it or refer complaints about it, that's totally you know fine either way. We, we um, and that's my opinion and, and that's fine. I mean, whatever you guys, th that's not really what this is about. That's not why I'm here and, and you know. Well, I'm looking at the scope of what we're going to address, okay? Sure. That, that and, and, and the issue I brought up of voter complaints about navigation problems sure. is a serious issue. And, and I would expect to follow up on Kevin's comment that the committee is going to want to address that issue as part of the document, the final document that we prepare. We are yeah. advisory, and as you know, the charge also uh, speaks to hearing complaints. Sure. Which we hear, okay. Yeah. So those involved voting issues, navigation issues, most recently concerns about um, shellfish gear, um, you know, regulations and so forth, which we have expressed. Members or anybody else want to uh, offer questions or comments? Uh, I would say that, um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know how long I've been on the committee, but uh, we, we've always addressed pretty much anything and everything that was in and around the waterfront. I mean, I, I know it specifically says Marina and I, and I get that, but, uh, uh, and that's probably the way it's written and blah, blah, blah. But um, I think once you get into a boat and you leave the marina, you're in the harbor of Wellfleet. And I think that that's where uh, I think the little clarification might be added to what Michael's talking about, which I, I get what he's, what he's saying. And um, at this point, yeah, we're, we're, we're dealing with complaints of, of navigational stuff always uh, with our, uh, just for recommending to the harbor master ideas and, and uh, solutions. And, <laughs> and, and that that's pretty much, uh, I, I, I love the idea of putting together a, a plan. I, I like this idea. I think it's great. And we have definitely a top five list and we all know what they are. And, uh, I, you know, they got to be put down on paper and, and, and so you guys can see them. I like that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm not saying that the, the, the Marine Advisory Committee can't make recommendations that it wants to make. That comment was really pertaining to being involved in actually the Marina Advisory Committee 
setting policy for use of the harbor um, that I was objecting to. And, and actually I was objecting only as an individual based on the charge that's written. Not that you, I mean, it says quite clearly to examine complaints and refer them to the harbor master uh, and make recommendations to the harbor, harbor master. So those are things that I think are totally, you know, appropriate for the, for the marine ma management, for, I mean, for the uh, marine advisory community to do. So if, if you wanna make a recommendation in this report that there be more balanced use of the harbor, I mean, that's up to you. I'm, I can't, you know, tell you, you can't do that. Uh, that's, you know, within your right to, to make any recommendations. It, it was right. more about being part of the policy setting that, uh, but that's oh, I, I, kind of- I understand that's, what you're saying. That's kind of off topic that. because really this is, is you know, about if that's part of what you recommend and maybe you recommend changing your charge to have more influence over policy. I'm, I'm really not here to have a, a tit for tat with you about it. I, I really want to see the Marina moving in a direction that's positive and, and to have these, these problems identified and, and really have this, this committee actually, you know, uh, make recommendations and ident and, and sort of lay out the problems that, that exist and come up with some kind of uh, those recommend the plan is really the recommendations on how to move forward. That's what, the strategic planning is. And I was just involved in, in a pretty uh, lengthy process of uh, the, uh, the uh, Massachusetts Shellfish Initiative where we went through and created a, a, a uh, basically a strategic plan for the state for uh, shellfish resources with a bunch of conflicting stakeholders and, you know, MEPA and, and all that. And, you know, that was a, a huge undertaking. Um, this is, is much smaller than that. I mean, it's really just about the management of the, of the marina itself. Um, if you want to go, this is a suggested structure. It says it right on top. So if you structure it another way, that's, that's the business of the committee. That's, yeah. yeah that, so, that's helpful. So. I think I speak for the committee when I say, that the words advisory and making recommendations are always uppermost in our minds. Uh, it has never entered our mind to make policy. That certainly is not our charge. Um, and I wanna share with you that um, um, as we work on this, it's critically important. The Harbor Master isn't here tonight, but it's critically important for him to bring to our table a needs assessment as he sees it so that we can all join in and develop this final product for you and provide support to him and to the select board. Yeah, I would hope that you guys can work hand in hand on that. Uh, it, it's, you know, uh, the, I know the Harbor Master in the past has always worked on the shellfish management plan and also the Harbor management plan. Um, so, I mean, personally where I see, you know, uh, uses of the harbor being, you know, policy set and recommendations made is in that harbor management plan. If it bleeds over into the sh to the marine advisory uh, committee, uh, harbor ma the marina management plan, I I don't personally see it as appropriate as being a management plan for the marina. But you know, you guys are free to do. You're free people, so. So this is more of a philosophical approach rather than a monetary approach. This is not a master plan. This is not a, this is a management plan. So this is basically identifying the problems, a uh, basic assessment, you know, identifying the problems, uh, laying out goals for both the Harbor master should have some goals for the Marina moving forward. The Marine advisory committee should have some goals for the Marina moving forward. And, um, and, uh, and then, basically a uh, recommendations and action items on how to uh, achieve those goals and resolve those problems. And they're just recommendations. And, you know, it, you know, we know there's, there's various issues that we all know and talk that we all know you guys know more than me. I mean, I'm not really a heavy user of the Marina itself other than, you know, uh, delivering oysters personally uh, down on the end of the dock, but there's parking issues. There's all sorts of issues. Not, they're all kind of complicated. And, um, 
some of them are not complicated at all and can be resolved quite quickly, but without having watch your meetings and the, the public participation and having a documentation of it, it, it doesn't get to the policymakers, right? It, it's, it's hard for us on a select board to, to, to sort of advocate putting money in to certain things when these sort of things haven't been sort of laid out, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, any comments or any questions? Um, I'm, I'm the host here, so I'm scanning the member. I don't see any hands raised. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Yeah. We appreciate coming forward. All thanks, right. Michael. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the clarification. That's for yeah, sure. yeah. I heard, I listened to a couple of meetings, and I was like, no, that's not really how it should have translated. And maybe it's my fault for uh, the way that I uh, broached it in that meeting to begin with. So um, I hope this is more clarified and, and I would just urge you to read those two management plans that are the Harbor management plan and the shellfish management plan and see how this plan can fit in with those as well and, and be a, a resource for the town. Perfect. All right. Okay. And Thanks. Thank um, you. I, I'm going to log off. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, the next item is uh, Harbor Master Report. Um, I don't see Will here. Will, are you on anywhere? No, I don't. I don't see Will here. So, he's not. I think he's on the. I think he's on the. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Will's not on this meeting, but he sent me instead. Oh, I thought he was on the iPhone. Okay. No, so, that's the other Will. That's Will Barrio, right, Will? Yep, that's me. Okay. All right. Um, Marina Concerns. Um, well, I have a question for the Harbor Master. Yeah. Before we get going, I want to know what happened. There was a, at the shelf, at the Selectman's meeting the other day, I saw an article that they were talking about fuel tanks. I want to know what happened with the fuel tanks. Um, I don't believe Will is on. I was at that meeting, um, so I can elaborate on that if you'd like. Either either you or the Harbor Masters rep, whoever wants to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, John. Kenzie, oh, Kenzie. If, you would like, if you would like Will to tell you, then I can have him email you or something because. It do doesn't. I mean, whoever knows something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heard I heard the meeting I was on. Okay. Um, Will presented to the select board that um, they're finishing the engineering plans, um, getting everything lined up to do construction with a completion target date of May 1st. Okay. Well, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think uh, John Wolf has his hand up. Yeah. yeah, John. Thank you, John. Please. Yeah, he he indicated that the bidding process should be completed uh, toward the end of February, as I recall. And, mm -hmm. and, and you were correct that the uh, completion date is May first. Uh huh. Okay. Now, are they the same place? They're going to go in the same place below ground. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. John, maybe you know the answer to this. I did not hear anybody ask it or if it was um, uh, presented, but um, the question that has come in, up in the past is um, upon completion, um, will, will these tanks be servicing um, town vehicles as well? Please fire DPW. That's my understanding mm -hmm. is that they will. I, I know I know that was the case when we were still talking about above ground tanks, and I don't I, I'm not aware of anything having changed since the uh, decision was made to put them underground. Okay. Um, any further comments or questions on that? I guess um, <laughs> I have one, uh, John. In regard to that, then, since the Marine Enterprise Fund is paying for the fuel. Are we getting reimbursed from the general fund for that usage by the other departments, or do we just eat that cost? Uh, 
I don't know if it would be coming from the general fund or from the individual departments, but I can't imagine that the that the Marina Enterprise Fund is going to eat that cost. I'll be happy to find out. I should be able to find yeah, out. Yeah, I have not. I'm kind of I'm working on the financial side of it and been um, kind of working with the town accountant, the interim town accountant on it. And I don't see any monies. When I say the general fund, most most departments report into the general fund or are funded by the general fund. We have an enterprise fund, which is a separate uh, self-sustaining entity. So yeah. I, that's my that's the nature of it. If they're using, you know, thousand gallons a year and we're buying it and not getting reimbursed, then essentially we're eating that. So it no, be, I can't imagine that would know. be the case. But I'll I'll find. Well, out. I don't know what the I, I don't know what the volume is. I don't see any monies ex, um, coming into the fund over the two years I've looked at it. For well, the, hands I'll, I'll, I'll reach out about it right now. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It, it it it's not urgent. I just think it's something that. It's fine if that's convenient to service the um, town's vehicles. I just think there needs to be a, a process to uh, at least get our, at least recover the cost of it. It's, yeah. It's not a, yeah. There's I, two I, hands I, up over here, Michael yeah. Lavasto and Nancy. Okay. Um, Michael. Yeah. Uh, so the departments purchase fuel from different vendors right now. What they'd be doing, in my understanding, is purchasing the fuel from the marina and so the marina enterprise fund would be receiving the revenue um so in each department budget is a fuel budget um and you know they there be the that money would be coming out of those budgets um and that's my understanding i don't know if there's any plan to change that structure so that marina isn't buying the fuel but I, i'm pretty sure marina enterprise would be buying the fuel and then selling it uh to the departments that's my understanding Okay. Was there another hand raised? Nancy Sabella. Hi. Yeah. So, for example, Michael's correct. Um, for example, we buy our fuel at the uh, DPW in East Ham, and each of us has a key that uh, is coded for Wellfleet Shellfish Department. And then we get a bill. The bill gets sent to town hall, divided up by which vehicles have. Um, fueled up and so they can attribute it to the various departments and then it gets taken out of our, our fuel line in our budget and I believe it's the same for all the other um, departments. I don't know, you know, I don't know if maybe other, maybe the police also uses mobile or something, but I know each department that goes up there, we get billed for it, it comes out of our individual budget, so we'll be reimbursed for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything else on that? Okay, Flip, um, you had asked um, to, um, to talk about um, the, um, the matter you presented about um, the pain. Um, well, since Nancy's here, she could probably address this much more efficiently than I can. Um, I mean, my, my goal was to just try to get a, our advisory committee to, to um, okay what she's got it for this pamphlet so that we can put it out front and and um, Nancy, why don't you take over and you can expl explain it probably better than I can, I'm sure. Okay, thanks. And thanks <laughs> for uh, accommodating this on your agenda. Um, did everybody get a copy of it? Otherwise I can share my screen. Would you share? I haven't screen? seen it. I haven't seen it. Okay, okay. so here we go. Um, can you see the recreation, a boater's guide to shellfish farming gear in Wellfleet Harbor? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. So uh, Jordan Halloran, um, while she was an AmeriCorps member serving with us, then, then we hired her as a uh, deputy. Um, but she put this uh, guide together with me, trying to, you know, we know that there's a lot of gear out there. And there's a lot of voters and they all want to make sure that this use harbor is successful for everybody and that there's no user conflicts. So we put this guide together and uh, kind of talk a little bit over here about, you know, the risks and why we're, you know, why people need to be careful. And then here we have uh, the little map, which this is what uh, Wellfleet Marine usually gives out. And, uh, but it was just this map and it didn't really explain everything that was under the water. So what we tried to do is here with Johnny in this picture, you see 
that it's you know three feet off the ground or two feet off the ground. And then over here you see clam nets and over here you have the rack and bag system that people use. So um, this is a brochure that we printed last year. Uh, the Harbor Masters gave it out the beach department and uh, Wellfleet Marine to their renters. And after we had come and, and had some conversations here, I felt like one of the things that you had suggested to us to do was to do some research into, you know, what would it take for the shellfish department to buy, uh, not to buy, but to get the list from the town of all the taxpayers and do a mailing. And it was exorbitantly expensive. But the town mails out its spring and fall tax bills. So I have put in a request to include this trifold brochure in the spring tax mailing. Now, the tax mailings accommodate three small pieces of paper, like the size of the number 10 envelope and different committees and departments can put things in. Because this is a trifold, it means that nobody else will be able to put their solicitation or educational um, piece in there for the spring mailer. But I feel like there's two committees here who feel it's important, Marine Advisory and Shellfish Advisory. This is, if it goes out to every single homeowner here, it's something that people can put on their fridge if they rent their house. It's something that if they have a boat or do docking, they can get it out, they can understand more um, about what's out there. I'm also working with Suzanne Thomas and John Ryerson to send, they, they do it everything via email now, but all of their kayak um, storage stuff and canoe storage, it's all done via email, but they're gonna send this out as an attachment. Mackenzie and Will are gonna send this out as an attachment with all of the slip and mooring renewals. So kind of we're hoping to touch people in a few different ways, but I guess what I'm looking to you to do, since it kind of is an idea that was born right here in this meeting, um, would you be interested in perhaps recommending to the select board, it is ultimately the select board's decision whether they include this in the spring tax mailing or not and at the expense of other committees who might want to put something in there. Not that they couldn't put something in in the fall, of course, they'll have that opportunity, but for the spring tax mailing, I feel like the spring is when this needs to go in before we have the summer season. There's really no reason to do it in the fall. Um, it doesn't, just from a timing sense, I think it's very opportune to do it for the spring tax mailing. So I would like to answer any questions and hear your feedback and wondered if you might take a vote to recommend if you so decide. Okay, questions or comments? Uh, where, where can I uh, obtain one of the pamphlets? Uh, we have them in our office. Will has them in his office. I think it's a very okay. good idea. I, I, would think, I would make a motion that we support Nancy in uh, asking yeah. the uh, selectmen to include this in the tax bills. I second it. Who is that that seconded it? Flip. 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 Okay. And so the motion would be to recommend that the um, pamphlet. A boater's guide to shellfish farming gear. <laughs> it's yes. a very long say again, title. <laughs> say that again, please, Nancy. The title of it is A Boater's Guide to Shellfish Farming Gear in Wellfleet Harbor. And Nancy, have you given any thought to um, also enlarging this so it could be put in one of those like large posters similar to what the Recreation Department has, you know, like posted down at the pier? I have not been able to do the research on that yet. That's kind of next down on the list. We, we right. talked about that at that meeting too. And then, um, the and then somebody meeting, was telling me we might get a bulletin board outside. Well, of, actually, yeah, the chamber's working on that right now. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> and, uh, and, and the other thing I was going to say is that what you've just put up on the screen here, I'm sure that if you talk to Laura from the chamber, she would be willing to send an e-blast out to all the chamber members. And she's got quite a few people on that mailing list. Great idea. Thank you. I'll do that. 
I'll ask mm -hmm. her to do it maybe like, you know, mid-May or something before Memorial Day weekend. Does that make sense? If she, yeah. if that's good for the chamber. I okay. think it would be. We have a motion on the floor as read. So if there's no further discussion, um, we will take the roll call vote. Uh, Walter? Aye. Sam? Yes. David? Yeah. Aye. Martha? Aye. Flip? Yes. Will Barrio? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Joe? Aye. Who am I missing? Ed. 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 Martha. Oh. I got, I got Martha. Ed. Yeah. Aye. Uh, okay, the motion passes. Thank you, Looks Nancy. Very nice. Thanks, Nancy. Right, Nancy. Nice job. Thank nice, you. Nice Thank job. you. I really, I really appreciate it. We're we're making great progress together. Um, so, sh uh, if I was going to say this to this, do you want to send something to the select board, or do you want me to just put it in my memo? And if so, could you tell me is it eight to zero, or I don't know how many members you have. Um, we have not we have seven members with two alternates um so it would be seven to zero um i'm fine with your putting it in the memo because it's on videotape it's a part of the minutes it's on the record yeah the minutes all okay, go to this lecture. thank you so much i really appreciate you thanks You're for welcome. doing that nancy okay that's thanks, great nancy. thank you guys i really appreciate it i'm gonna stop welcome. sharing my screen <laughs> Okay, all right, um, the next item on the uh, part of Marina Concerns, um, David, I think you wanted to comment about the pilings that are going in. I just want to um, uh, <coughs> just emphasize how the importance of uh, monitoring them uh, closely um, I went down there earlier in the week and um, I saw where the pilings had been placed for my, <clears throat> for my slip, go figure. And uh, it was like, uh, you, you could barely fit, you know, a, a small pram through it. So, you know, I went in today cause I wasn't sure what was going on. So I went in today and um, I spoke to Mackenzie and uh, Dave Perry um, and uh, they explained that um, it's all done on GPS coordinates um, and that the, uh, uh, they're triangulated and that perhaps it, you know, may be an optical illusion on my end, which, you know, it, it is what it is. But they, they you know, and, and I understand it was a pretty lousy day today, so they didn't want to go out and look at it today. But they had informed me that they would, um, you know, go out with a tape measure and, and make sure that, you know, it was okay. Um, later today, I went down there again, and lo and behold, the, um, the entire section that I was talking about had been realigned, and um, the spacing is not an issue. But I guess the reason I'm telling you this is it's important for us to make sure that, you know, um, we're monitoring that, um, because it can be easily missed, and if they're off, and it's your boat, then maybe, you know, the next down the line have to be moved too to adjust who knows so that's, that's all i'm saying about it and i would add to that um what i learned on the dredging task force is that um that crew said they would get their equipment it would take uh about uh, 10 days at the most to put all the pilings in so they're not going to be here much longer so i think what david's saying is if you're interested go down and check out your stuff yeah, I have a comment on that. Uh, um, the outboard slips, those pilings are supposed to be in a straight line, and they're not in a straight line. Uh, I was wondering about that myself. Uh, Did you talk to the harbor master? Walter? I just noticed it today, so I have not gone down there and said anything yet. Are they staggered? Yeah. Well, they're that's not in a straight they, line. Don't they do one on one side and one on the other side? Do they? The Maybe they do. Yeah, they, that's what that's what that's the, so they they counterbalance each other. Oh, it could be you could be right, Flip. I'm yeah. a new guy down there. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you want to get a clarification. Uh, yeah, 
Doesn't yeah, have should, to ask questions. I should check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else under Marina concerns? Okay. Yeah, no. No, John. No, John. John. Yeah, I just wanted to break in. I I contacted the town administrator regarding the fuel question, and. Uh, Yes, the, it appears what's going to happen is that the marina will bill the various town departments for their fuel use. Logical. All right. Yeah, we Thanks, have to, we we pay for their services. They should pay us for our services. Yeah, and they will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems to me to be a management uh, matter in and of itself. Okay. Um, Anything else under Marina concerns? Okay. Um, Ed, Ed has up. his hand up. Uh, hey Joe, I got a, I got a question for Nancy uh, since she's still on. Yes, Ed. It has to do with the brochure. I just noticed when she was sharing her screen, the one page mentioned that those um, those beds, those those farming areas were delineated by buoys at four corners. And um, I'm always curious when I'm out there, do those buoys have any specific markings? Um, and then the follow-up question would be, depending on how large those areas are, are is four buoys enough to give a, a, a boater a sense of where they are in the, in the general space? Joe, so may I? Nancy, are you on? I am. Please. Okay. Um, so it's it's kind of a minimum of four. They have to do their four corners. A lot of these farms um, have extensions. And so even though they operate as one farm, you might have six or eight buoys out there. In addition, people who have grants or farms near uh, frequently navigated and transited, they might put out more. Like there's some people along Brackfish Creek that put out more buoys. And also on Egg Island, especially that one grant that kind of extends to the north, um, he puts out quite a few buoys so that people understand. Sometimes they're like little hazard buoys or he'll do a hazard sign on his red, on his round um, buoy. So they're usually uh, round buoys um, and it just kind of depends. They have to have a minimum of four and many people when like you're exactly right when it's a larger um, swath of, of, uh, of a farm, people tend to put a couple extra, especially if they're near like a channel or a heavily transited area. Okay, thanks. Is there a standard uh, appearance of these buoys? Are they a standard configuration? Uh, most of them are just round, kind of mid-sized round buoys, and they are um, they are supposed to have their grant number on them. And most uh, people will also put on a telephone number in case they go missing, because of course they're valuable. Um, but it does and happen. Sometimes. And they're green. No, not not always green. They're, they're yellow. They're yellow. <laughs> yellow. Yeah. Mostly green. yellow, but. But yeah, the shellfish department uses most of the green. If you see green ones around, that's usually us uh, mapping out coaching areas or uh, areas that we're going to dump oysters, stuff like that. Um, but there's, um, you know, m most people use that. I know like the cards use the, the kind of oblong um, uh, lobster buoys. Nancy, so you'll see those over on like the southwest side of Egg Island. I'm taking a minute, Nancy. I want to be accurate. Did you say that the the required on the buoy to have the grant number and telephone number? Is that correct? I think they're just. Let me look up the regs to be sure. Um, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to have their uh, grant number on there. Grant and number. one would one would think that I would know this by heart, but there's too many regs to keep up with. So I always like to reference. Just give me one minute. And of course, you know, they all go out with perfect numbers in the beginning. And then, you know, <laughs> a couple of months into the season, you can't read them because of the sun. But usually when we're doing grant inspections, uh, we ask people just to get a paint pen and redo them if they're not 
clear enough. Black nail uh-huh. polish. Wow. <laughs> nail, nail polish, lacquer, it's good stuff. Any other, um, <laughs> any other questions or comments, uh, Ed? Not for me, thank you, that's all. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Um, Trudging update on December 27th. Um, the Inner Harbor is completed dredging. Um, there is a final survey that um, is supposed to be done to ensure that um, everything that was supposed to be dredged is dredged. It's required by the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the challenge now before the dredging task force is to secure the permit for area two, the mooring field, all 24 acres of it. Um, and that's gonna be quite a challenge. The Army Corps still has not granted us that permit. Um, we have provided reams of documentation as well as our engineering studies as well. Um, we're working with the engineers, the Harbor Master, the state and federal agencies, um, uh, strategic planning, political, and also working with our lobbyists. The good news is the um, lobbyist has had discussions with the top command of the Army Corps of Engineers in Washington, DC. And they um, have not made a decision and are open-minded to an ongoing review of it. Um, additionally, um, our two senators and Congressman Keating actively are supporting this. And um, recently, the president appointed the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Affairs, who oversees the Army Corps of Engineers, David Connor. And I know Congressman Keating has had a conversation with him advocating for us. And Senator Markey is scheduled, I believe sometime next week, to have a conversation uh, with him advocating for us as well. So I will keep you informed as we learn things as we go along. Any, uh, any questions or comments? Okay, um, the next item um, certainly isn't going to be a quick one, Marina Pocking. I um, suggest that you access the diagram I did um, of the parking spaces on the marina. Um, I want to make a few comments to begin. <clears throat> Diagram does not include the following 10 handicapped spaces. It does not include the seven spaces in front of the shellfish office. It does not include the five spaces in front of the picnic tables by Max. And finally, it does not include the four live spaces by the ramp. Now, I thought I'd start the discussion by stating where we stand right now. Right now, there are no specifically designated spaces for cars. There are 58 spaces designated along the south guardrail for trailers. And there are 27 trailer spaces designated in the middle row in front of the bandstand for a total of 85 spaces. So I've come up, given our, our discussions in the past and what you've expressed an interest in, I've come up with a couple of um, plans simply for discussion to put out on the table. Um, if you would reference the diagram, it would start at the beginning um, where Pearl is. You see there are 21 spaces there and continue all the way down the guardrail to the end 
where there are 52 species and designate those for marina boater parking. Those would be a total of 73 species. If you keep the 58 trailers along the guardrail, which were required by the state to do, and keep the 27 trailers in the middle row in front of the bandstand, you have for boaters designated 73 cars and 85 trailers. Trailers will comprise about 54% of that, and cars 46%. The second proposal I developed for discussion would be to take what I just articulated, the 21 starting at Pearl, the 52 along the guardrail, both of those for cars, keeping the 58 trailer spots required by the state along the guardrail. And David suggested the idea of converting that middle row of trailers in front of the bandstand from 27 trailers to parking for 78, 72 cars. That area is 648 feet long. Each, each um, striped area for one car is nine feet wide. And if it, they were made at an angle, that would provide for 72 cars. If you, if you look closer at that plan with that total of 145 cars and 58 trailers, 71% of that total would be for cars and 29% and for trailers. If you take that proposal and you apply it to the overall total, okay, including all of the other public parking areas to the left, okay? That total would be 324. And of that total, it would be uh, 58 trailers. And I'm sorry, of that total, boaters would have, including trailers, 63% of the total and the public 37%. So two out of three spaces under that proposal would be allocated for voters. Uh, Joe, can I have a quick question on that? Are you, are you saying that that whole center aisle would just be designated for voters that you guys the switch out on the trailer to that, car? That, that's under proposal two that David suggested looking at 72 cars could fit in there. Uh, so without, ex why? Without, without expanding that area uh, lengthwise, simply making the cars at an angle. And, and I think it's significant to note that if you do that, there's 30 feet between that middle aisle and the trailers on, on the guardrail, and another 20 feet from that middle aisle to car parking by the slips. Assuming there's nobody sticking out on the trailer side. Okay, discussion. What, um, Joe, how do you, uh, how would we um, designate those just by a color um, and use stickers or what are you thinking for that? I, I'm not, <laughs> you know, as you know, Sam, we discussed that can of worms last time. There's so right. many different ways to do that. Um, I didn't even get into that. Yeah. I was yeah. trying to focus okay. on what is available in a couple of different plans and, and the percentages. Um, right. No, and I think that your second proposal definitely accommodates the boating community much, much better. That's, that's great. Uh, I think the suggestion of doing, um, you know, the di diagonal spaces or whatever we're going to call them for cars versus trailers. I do remember a discussion that Will brought up at one point about a concern about that middle lane because of the folks maneuvering trailers and they're not so good at that. So I, 
I would just want him to weigh in on that, I guess, to make sure that this is not going to create more of a challenge for those um, kind of novice trailer drivers. So one, yeah, of the biggest... jump, one oh, thing that jumped out at me was that, um, you know, with the present allocation, it's skewed heavily toward trailers and not cars. Dave, you had your hand up. Um, uh, so did Walter. Walter was ahead of me. So go ahead oh, first, Walter. I'm sorry, Walter. Uh, well, I go down to the pier quite often in the summer and all year round. And uh, the, that trailer line in the middle is pretty well jammed up with trailers. Uh, a lot of people, because of the fact that you can't get a slip into town of Wealthy for 20 or more years, a lot of people run boats off trailers. And uh, on a nice day, that whole run is full of trailers. I don't know how well that would work, unfortunately. I mean, it's a good idea, but uh, I think that uh, we need we need to leave it as it is plan number one basically because i don't think uh i think you're gonna have a lot of irate trailer sailors if you do that let me let me play the devil's advocate on the other side of the coin um we have what 140 slips um we have uh commercial people charter captains who have their customers and soon we'll have about 330 or so moorings and you know, I, what I foresee is, you know, um, a conflict of priorities. Um, who should have the priority, the trailers or those who are paying for slips and for moorings? As it's constituted now, it's pretty heavily skewed toward trailers. Kevin? Well, your hand. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Walter, did you have something else? No, David, not right now. David, you were, I'm sorry, David. Um, well, the, the only thing I wanted to mention is that um, in my looking at that middle section to, to do the angle parking to create the 72 new spaces, um, one thing that would have to change, and um, Stephen Picard actually shared this with me, um, that when you back a trailer in the way the trailers are angled right now, uh, it's a blind spot for anybody that's a novice. They looking over their shoulder and through the window versus looking over the uh, over their right shoulder versus looking over their left shoulder, and it's a lot easier to back a trailer if the angle was the other way. So that when the vehicles came in, the, that all they have to do is back it in rather than make that big turn, which makes it difficult for anybody. So that's that's one thing I think there's a design flaw currently. Mm, I agree with the way, with the way the with the way the um, uh, traffic is flowing and the way these guys are trying to put their trailers into a spot. It's, it's a tough, it's a tough turn yeah. or even some of that knows how to do it. As we've said before, it comes down to priorities. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to accommodate everybody paying for slips, moorings and day trippers with their trailers. Well, maybe instead of leaving, uh, I think eventually we're going to have to take over that whole parking lot, basically. You know, one, one point to note, I was around when it happened, when the state gave us the $450,000 to put the new ramp in, and, and they determined, or stipulated, that we had to have 58 trailer spaces. They looked at the entire marina and the sizing of it, and their conclusion was they, were only, they only felt the need to accommodate 58 trailers. That's a that's an interesting point, Joe, because that's kind of what my thought was about losing those trailer spots is that I, I felt like the state might like go, what it, whoa, 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 you can't do that, you know. But uh, you're right, they did. They designated that that minimum amount or that we needed to have. It's a good point. Well, like you said, the minimum amount. But but yeah, that's minimum but, amount that for the four hundred thousand that doesn't have anything to do with maximum capabilities. No, I, mean, I meant in terms of capabilities are going to be felt this year because of the permit in Rock oh, yeah. Harbor. You're going to get them all. Oh, well, that thing's going to fill up. There's no doubt. Fifty eight right. are gone. Uh, it's and, it's not only it's not only just that. There, I see more and more people that have homes in Wellfleet that have their boats on trailers that are trailing them down there all that's the time. What I mean. And, yeah. uh, and then in addition to that, 
the larger trailer spaces over there on the other side for some of those people that have those big spaces to get in and out of there is there going to be a par problem swinging the trailers and their trucks in and out of there if there's a lot of parking in the center and once again i'm playing devil's advocate that but you know if, if you have like the parallel i mean the the diagonal parking like you're talking about and some guys got like a pretty good sized trailer over there on the end uh and they're trying to swing it in and out of there is it going to be an issue dave you measured it what do you think i i i you know i it's a it's a possibility i i, I don't know you know because any given day you might have one person that parks like an idiot too that that they're sticking out too far or there's something going on that uh, could create a big log jam in there, a big issue. And the person that's parked might be out in the water, so you can't even get to them. Um, yeah, no, that, it could be an issue, you know. I, I think it's also a flow issue, Joe. Um, it's only happened within the last five, five to five years that when you come up out of the ramp, people are going more to the left than they're supposed to go to the right. It used to be you come up by that ramp and you go to the right and close up your boat and then leave. Now you got all a bunch of, there's a line going out where, where you have those 21 parking spots over by the Pearl. They're lining up there blocking traffic. Yep. So I, I mean, again, it comes down to a, a, a thing of management that someone has to be out there from the Harbor Master directing traffic. To say to them, you're not supposed to park there. You got to pull a little closer. You're taking up two spots. And you know what, Kevin? That's going to be very. That's it's going to get spread out. But you're at the end of the day. You're right. It doesn't matter what the tide is. If people are going to be coming out at the end of the day at that, you know, that four o'clock to seven o'clock hour, it's going to, it's going to probably jam up more consistently than it has because it's absolutely. Be, and then you uh, got people cutting in front of each other down on on the boat. Pulling right, their boats the, out, and yep, well, I got my trailer coming in. Yep, that's it. Yep. So it becomes yeah, you're right, more the, of a, you're man, right. a management issue and a flow issue uh, to well, uh, have to deal with yeah. that. They're going to have to have of, some guidance. Yeah. Well, I think well, Joe's comment about the about the fact that uh, those trailer uh, or David's comment about the fact that those trailer spaces are pointed in the wrong direction. Is, is a big thing. Uh, yeah, I think if they're if they're pointed the other way, you could drive down that that lane and then back a trailer in without too much trouble. And I think that's a big problem right now. That could be easily done with paint. Exactly. You know, right? Let me follow up on Martha's comment about um, more people having um, boats on trailers. If we retain the present setup with 58 trailers along the guardrail, 21 in the middle for 85 trailers. And, and we allocate all of the spaces along the guardrail starting at Pearl and come down. Um, we end up with parking for 85 trailers and 73 cars. I try to come back to the fact one of you know we're representing voters and we try to anticipate things and one thing i anticipate is those slip holders you know questioning why there are more slots for trailers than cars questioning you know the mooring people as well bearing in mind that um we need to keep our boaters to support the marina enterprise fund and I know we can't, we can't accommodate everybody, but the, the question I'm getting at is given that more trailer spaces than cars, do you wanna look at the possibility to the left of absorbing more car spaces for boaters? I throw that out for discussion. I think that's what's gonna to have to happen, Joe. I, I think we're gonna to have to take over more of that parking, parking lot because I mean, it is a marina parking. It's not municipal parking. Walter, no, look to the much. left, just to follow up. Walter, look to the left. I know, I, I know. You, what have, you, mean. you have the 21 on the top, along yeah. the guardrail. The next block down is for 47. Correct. Are you suggesting we should take a look at that block? I think so. 
I mean, I think there's definitely a time frame on this too that we have to kind of throw into the mix. Um, you know, there there's obviously heavy traffic times, and then there's non-heavy traffic times. And I know we've gone over this a couple of times, dust to dawn, and all that kind of nonsense. Um, and I know there's like there's already two-hour parking at the pier, which I, I don't think a lot of people know that um, in certain areas. Um, so I don't know if that's part of this equation or are we like 24 seven in these spots? Uh, it's just a food for thought on what we're talking about with these slots that you're talking about. Um, let me share with you what I observed as a member of the parking task force. Um, one of the things was we're one of the few marinas that uh, probably the only one that we heard about on Cape and off where the town did not have a municipal parking lot there. And, and right. many business people will tell you as they came in and told the parking task force, uh, that's not only a marina parking lot, that's a municipal parking lot for my customers, okay? So we have quite a challenge on our hands. Right. Whatever we decide and we have to do the work um, to justify uh, what we're going to advocate for. I, I think certainly the numbers are in our favor of slip holders and, and moorings. Um, but to follow up on your, your point, um, Flip, when weather's not great, there's not going to be as much demand for boaters to fill those slips. And doesn't that come down to a management issue? Okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I just, I wonder what the what the layover is you know i don't know how we you know case let's see like you have a, a 60 degree crappy windy day and and obviously the restaurants are going to be full but but we don't we're not going to be out in our boats so i don't know how we uh allow the parking to happen on those kind of days i guess i'm just trying to figure out a just something from my my own head i'm just throwing it out there to, it's a thought process and i'm trying to yeah. figure out well one suggestion that came before the, the task force was you control that by having a gate and a, right. and a person manning it to and open it's available it it's available yeah yeah on on cloudy windy days when there's no boating you know to 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 take a different format on that day and that way you're making money off it that's my other thought was <laughs> this or what if there's a way to make cash off of it at the end of the day I know we need to accommodate ourselves, but but I think that if we can make some money somehow out of this whole scenario, which is going to happen, and we all know it's going to happen, that that, that parking lot is going to just be overwhelmed in the next five to ten years. Walter, that, that, what about him? Well, the first the first thing is that obviously, as we've discussed many times, is it's a townwide problem, and there's got to be some other stuff that has to happen. But uh, what I'm thinking is, like you said, Flip we have to have some kind of control there and, and boaters should have priority. If you come right. in there and it's a nice day and you got a slip, you get a parking space. Everybody else got to wait. I mean, and if it's a bad day and there's no boaters in there, let them in, you know, charge them money, but there's got to be some kind of a control for that to work. And we don't have right. any control. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's the challenge. Well, you got to have a kiosk or something, you know, you know, we can talk about this and talk about this and, and which is now over the years, oh, yeah. you know, we've done a lot of diagrams, which have been great. And the, ta the parking task force did a lot of work on this, you know, four years ago. But I think it's time now that, you know, we, we've got to come up with like, you know, some type of management plan here and, and figure out, you know, like what the objectives and implications of this whole thing are and how we're going to execute it, or at least make suggestions to how it should be operated. And, uh, you know, otherwise we can just continue going around and around and around about this. And, you know, and as we do that, the problems just continue to increase there. But oh. I think... We we need to identify all the issues, which I think, you know, we're, we're talking about and we have done, but we need to put this all, you know, like down on paper and really discuss it and come up with like some of the ways, you know, that some of these things could be, impl uh, you know, implemented. Yeah, I, I hear you. And I think you're talking about process. Um, I have found this discussion valuable. I think the points of view offered are all good ones. And, and I value that input. Um, 
So, you know, I don't, I don't want to curtail that. Um, I have a suggestion, and, and that is for next time, email me your ideas, your thoughts about priorities, very brief you know, how it should be managed to follow up in Martha, what Martha's saying. I'll see if I can combine them and list them and, um, and we can take it up next time to narrow it down. The other, the other thought was um, the parking task force concluded strongly and put it in writing that there's gotta be alternative site parking, okay? not only to accommodate the marina, to accommodate the businesses, commercial street, downtown. And we came up with the idea of a short shuttle bus, which they use in Chatham. And um, I suggested looking at um, the DPW parking area, which isn't too far away, uh, could accommodate a good number of cars and have the shuttle bus go on a loop you know, go downtown, down Commercial Street, down the marina, and then back over um, to that lot. Um, I didn't hear much comment from the select board about that. The recommendation was strong to begin to, to have the select board begin discussing it then. Um, at that time, they did not pick up on it because I try to impress upon them in my final presentation that we have a gift. We, we have a marina enterprise. Unlike the other towns where um, the marina has to be supported um, considerably out of the town treasury. Um, so, you know, if we want to maintain that gift, um, we have to provide a good product for boaters, is the way I put it, and accommodate them. And that's how it ended. Well, John, I, I'm sorry, Martha, you want to continue? I think that in, in part, you know, we've discussed this in the past too. I, I think that we need to include in this discussion, you know, probably some other members, uh, you know, like of the town government, because I, I know that the town is, you know, batted around the idea of what they're doing about parking. I mean, in the last several years, they've limited parking in the, you know, to, to two hours in the parking lot across from Prez Hall and also in back of the town hall. But I, I don't know whether there's ever any thought there about eventually charging people to park. And there's also that small parking lot that's down at the, uh, you know, uh, bottom of Bank Street there, um, you know, very small. And then there's another small parking lot there that I guess belongs to the, the, uh, the Masons there. But um, along with the uh, DPW solution, you know, and, and doing any kind of shuttle bus, uh, has there been any thought of coordinating thing, uh, anything with the Nauset School District in the elementary school parking lot in the summertime? Yeah, right. uh, Martha, that I can tell you before the parking task force, everybody was involved, government, town government, the business community, the boating community, the beach community, Suzanne was there for every meeting, the police were there, we heard a lot of testimony and a lot of priorities stated by all those various parties, okay? Um, the issue, all the issues came up, including charging people behind the town hall parking lot, including meters on the street. You know, we heard from the librarian who would make calls to the town administrator because people who wanted to shop downtown would park in the library lot and walk over. Okay, all of these things came into play in making that recommendation for. Um, a shuttle service, but everybody was represented there. Surveys, as you know, went out to all um, slip and mooring holders, went out to the business community, went out to the beach community. Um, everything was covered and it was all documented. Right, but, but, but all of that was what, four years ago now? No, that was two years ago when it concluded. Okay. It's but, not outdated uh, by any means. Okay. So what was the conclusion of any action plans that were going to be taken with that? None. The charge, the charge of the parking task force was to make, to, to evaluate and to make recommendations. Those are all in writing online on the parking task force. The surveys are all there as well. 
we all filled out a survey we got in the mail with our lease. You know, at that time, because of a lack of dredging, most people said they didn't have a hard time parking. But a lot of them commented on with the advent of dredging, that certainly was going to change a lot. But it's all documented a lot. I, 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 you know, I, no, I, under, I understand that, Joe. And I know that there was quite a, a considerable amount of work done on that. But a, as part of that, were, were there any action plans that were you know, put in writing to be implemented? The action plan, again, we were limited by our charge by the select board to recommendations. The strongest recommendation was for a shuttle service to alleviate what everybody identified as the biggest problem. They talked, for example, about people going to the beachcomber and parking down at the marina. You know, we heard it all. You know, we, we saw, uh, I mean, but, I, I could go but on. Joe, but in that. that, Wayne did a lot of work. I attended 99 with Will, 99% of those meetings. They, Wayne put a lot of time into the meters, into the metered parking. In he did. The, I felt that the general consensus of the town was they didn't want to charge for parking. That's correct. So again, we all look at this and we see um, we're going to have to charge for parking and they're mm -hmm. going to have to start somewhere. And the marina to me is the place that it should be started. Let Kevin free parking Rack in the rest of the town charge in the marina. That what you indicated about not wanting meters and not charging for parking did not address the marina. Right. Address the other areas. Right. Okay. And, and you're right, it was very strong. And I think that's a good example of why we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Wayne did a terrific job and has all the research in that from the business community, from the beach community. Okay. They don't want to charge. Okay. But they didn't address that issue on with the, the marina. marina right i was the only boater there familiar with the marina parking issues okay <clears throat> but it, we we try to say in our in our closing argument to the select board this needs to be addressed as a townwide problem the focus is on the marina in downtown on the commercial street area and why not consider a shuttle bus we could not promote an action plan we made specific recommendations. John, you're on. Um, yeah, when was this brought to the select board? Because uh, was that before I was on it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's 20, it was 20, 2018. I, I, I would be happy to put this. Almost four years ago. To get it's this. All, the report is all online, John. Hmm? The, the report you can read all online. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. I'm on the board now, and I'd be happy to uh, uh, recommend this as an agenda item. I mean, it's long overdue to deal with it. Reinvestigate. Hmm? It's a, it needs to be reinvestigated for sure. I well, mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much more investigation we need to do. We need to action do. needs to be taken. Yeah, that's what I mean. Absolutely. That's my John. Point. John, I have a suggestion. Mm hmm. Um. Let us continue our work on finalizing a plan for arena parking. And then if you could bring it before the select board with a strong recommendation that they read the party parking task force document along with our recommendation for arena parking. Okay. Um, I was all, as far as the specifics on marina parking, um, I had, this is just something I, I didn't read this anywhere. I just thought it might be something to consider that uh, uh, slip holders and mooring holders and charter operators be issued a sticker and everyone else pays. Either at a, at a kiosk like they do in Provincetown. Um, I love that idea. Hmm? I like that idea. <laughs> John, John, would you state that idea again? Yeah. Uh, that uh, anyone who holds a slip or mooring or operates a charter uh, either be issued a sticker uh, along with their, you know, when they, when they uh, pay for their annual fees or else get an endorsement on the dump beach sticker, whatever is more practical. 
and everybody else pays at a at a, a an electronic kiosk like in Provincetown. Right. Up in Provincetown, one of the things that uh, they do for all the commercial fishermen that go out on the commercial pier is they allow um, each uh, uh, slip owner to have a placard that hangs on their rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. but they can move it because if you have a different vehicle on a different day, you know, you, 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 it's transposable. It's not to the vehicle, it's to the person who owns the slip. Good, good point. So that's one of those things that uh, would be very helpful. And I do, do agree with you. I think it's, it's time we need to start charging down there. Yeah, that way you're not limited to one vehicle that you have your sticker on. Right. John, just um, to share with you what we heard on the parking task force is um, there's a lot of entitlement among the business community for that to be a municipal lot, okay? I think we, we heard that before. I think we can anticipate hearing that again. And ultimately, it's going to come down to the select board establishing priorities. I, I agree, I agree. The, the, the business community, and not to slam the business community at all, but they've become kind of accustomed to having that. And, and uh, you know, Provincetown, they charge for parking everywhere. Uh, yeah, and we could, we've, John, we've we could- We've been giving it valid, away for years. Yeah, we could, we could have a validated system too if, if the Pearl and, and Max um, on the pier and all that want to, they can, they can validate and essentially they'll be charged for the parking. So it wouldn't deter people from coming there to buy food. You know, exactly. That's so, done all over the country. It, it, yeah, exactly. So it, you know, as far as who bears the cost, I mean, it, if they think the consumer will not come to their restaurant for three dollars of parking or whatever it is, then, you know, we can do validated uh, system where <laughs> essentially there's a charge for that that they would pay. Um, and if they're buying a meal and a, some drinks, I would think that would be well worth it for them. John, just to give you a quick flavor of what we heard on the parking task force and what we learned, um, there is a um, yoga studio down in Commercial Street. If you go on their website, they tell you do not park by Max Shack. It's a lovely walk to the marina park there. On days when the parking lot at Max Shack was filled, the sandwich board out front said lot full park at the marina. Same thing with the Holden Inn. Holding in yeah. weddings, yes. They send their yep. people there. So there's yep. going to be that that that's a lot of blowback. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll await your word. And uh, you know, and when you're ready, I'll I'll be happy to make a presentation. Yeah. John, the final report I just looked it up. Um, Joe, confirm this is right. The final report's dated February 25th of 2020. That's the task force two report, Joe. Where, where yeah, will so I it, find it's pretty that recent. It, that's some yeah. of the reading I need to catch up on. We're, it's we're on the, um, if you go to the town website on the parking task force. Okay. And I checked not too long ago. Somebody inquired. It's on there. I'll do uh, my homework. And feel free to talk to somebody, people. Denny O'Connell was the chair. Okay. You, you know, um, Dale Donovan, self, uh, Wayne, um, you know. Jenny Parker, Lyons. Parker. Yeah, Bill Lyons was on it. Um, you know, Jenny and and uh, Dale Will are Sullivan. Both, people, both people I, um, you know, communicate with. So I but will do my work. homework. You're going to ultimately you're going to have a hot potato on your table. I've what was Wayne's last name, Joe? I'm sorry. What was Wayne's last name? Clow, C L O U G H. He did all the work on the on the kiosks. Okay. He did a ton of work on the kiosks. And he right, did uh, the um, survey for the beach goers. Yeah. Yeah, I've already got hot potatoes, so I, I'm getting used to them. <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you make the big bucks, John. That's right. Walter. This is just a more general observation. I mean, this town has been changing a lot, especially in the last maybe five or 10 years. And, uh, you know, the old ways are going to have to go. I mean, the free parking is, is beautiful, but it, it, it doesn't work anymore. You know, the select men have to make a decision to change some of the ways of this town because it, we're getting overrun, as you well know. Uh, something has to be done about this parking. And, and like you said, you guys worked on this and worked on this. And what happens? Nothing. 
and they got to get kicked in the butt on this thing because it's just going to get worse and worse yeah. and worse. There has to so be I, something I think done. Nothing, one of the reasons nothing happened, Walter, at the time was we didn't have dredging. So there wasn't a strong demand from voters. But the other comment I offered to the parking task force, people who visit here and use parking, I don't think any of them come from any, any city or town where they're not accustomed to paying exactly. for parking. Exactly. And, right. and that place was jammed back this summer anyway. I mean, there was, no. there was people parking there and getting Ubers to go to the beachcomber. Yeah. And absolutely. And when people are paying, you know, three and four thousand dollars a week to rent a place, you know, five bucks to park on the pier, you know, or ten bucks is a drop in the bucket. You they're, know, they're coming here from New York. The select men have to make a move is what has to happen. Yeah. 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 We need action. Right. They're coming so here can we get back to the we kind of discussed two different. I think there are two different um, topics here. They were both really important, but. Originally, we kind of last time we discussed the 2022 season and how we address that the shorter term. And that's kind of where you started the conversation. And then we, you know, we moved on to a longer term because um, I, I don't think we're going to solve the offsite shuttle and all that by by this coming voting season. So I guess. Yeah, sorry, to, I to distracted it, from that. No, no, that's OK, but it, 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 it's important. But I think it's something that we should address you know, after we um, come to a consensus on what we do for 22, and you put forward uh, two proposals, um, which both seem reasonable. I think there's challenges to it. You know, it's it's not a perfect scenario, but I think we should move forward because we're already in January and, you know, try and get consensus here so we can take something to the um, select board to, for, for action, you know, for this year. Um, I guess I would lastly say that with regard to, to transient voters versus slip holders and mooring holders, I would prioritize the latter, the mooring and, and slip holders so that you, just because I, you know they're paying the freight, right? So I, I would give them priority. So going with 72 spaces in the center there, assuming the configuration works would be, I think, a better plan and, and maybe maybe reconfiguring the trailer spots at a different angle so you can back in properly and all that's a good suggestion. But I think we need those spaces for for the boating community, especially, I mean, I looked at your photos of the dredging and it looks awesome at, at the low tide. I mean, you know, there's gonna be a lot of demand for, for all summer long there, so. And all those boaters you mentioned, Sam, waited a long time on the list. Yeah, no, exactly. That's why, I mean, I, I don't want to brush anybody aside, but I think if you have to prioritize, I would prioritize the slip and mooring holders versus the transient, you know, the trailer, trailering boaters, just because, you know, you have to go one way or the other, right? Um, yeah. So. Here, here's what I'm proposing. I, I, I find this discussion helpful. I hope you do. Um, send me your ideas, brief, about priorities and in, in some numbers. And let's continue this at the next meeting. How do people feel about doing that? And move closer to a final yeah. recommendation. Well, the, the one problem I'm seeing is the is the enforcement of it. I mean, that's the huge that's the key right yeah. there. Huge. And, and and you know, one I was mentioned tonight, maybe, maybe the easy we heard all those ideas on the task force, and from some of you, the kiosk, you know, the sticker. Um, and so forth, and maybe, I don't know, but maybe the easiest way to enforce it is with a gate. With a what? With a gate. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe. Something to think about. Yeah, the only thing with the gate is people trailing and having to wait. It's going to create such a traffic jam down there. Well, uh, they're going to be allowed to wait if the lot is full. Well, you're well, also going to have to jam the have road up. Yeah, and you're also going to have to have it staffed at some really odd hours because, like, a lot of those people with trailers, they get down there at four or five o'clock in the morning sometimes to go out. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Would but they got, like this, to... they got their space if they come that early. <laughs> Would you like to move forward with that plan? Send me your priorities and your ideas. I'll consolidate them and we'll pick up from here next time. Uh, I'm 
Joe, just a quick question. Um, pri like in terms of for this year's, like like Sam was saying, to address our concerns for this season only yeah. right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what are you talking specifically about. with parking, Joe? Or are you talking about in general, kind of where Michael w was going? No, no, I'm talking about no, oh, I'm talking parking. So okay, parking. okay, thanks. Yeah, and yeah. next time I'm going to put on the agenda, we can make an outline of how we're going to proceed with what Michael was talking about. Okay, very good. Do you want to proceed yeah, along good. that track with parking? Send me your ideas and we'll consolidate them and pick it up from here next time. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. yeah, I think we're pretty close to that right now. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, yeah, we can find. Hopefully, we can come away next meeting with a with yeah, a proposal, motion, solid. whatever we're going to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, please send them to me. Um, yep. Does anybody have anything for new business and future concerns? Yeah, plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, looking at the calendar, four weeks would be um, February the 9th. Good, looks good here. Yeah. Hey to me. I don't I'm have off that. Uh, looks good. Shall we do that? Yeah. Okay. Three, All right. Um, I'm looking at 8.38. For a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. Walter? I second it. Second. Um, second. Kevin, Kevin, you seconded? First. Kevin was if, first. Sam, if Sam wants it, he can have it. No, you can have it, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> we want to go home. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I think we accomplished All right. a lot. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, John. Have a good one. Thanks for attending, John. Okay, mm -hmm. so long.